How do I know he won't cheat again? <clears throat> so how do you know if you commit to trying to work on the marriage that he won't cheat on you again? I think that's a big question and I would guess and assume it's a big fear for most of us who are choosing to stay after infidelity. Uh, it's a valid question and it's a scary question. So I want to take just a few moments um, to unpack that a little bit and let's talk about um, what's in our control and what's out of our control and what to do about it. So stay tuned. So wondering if uh, he's going to be unfaithful again is something I believe is at the top of our list of why we're anxious 24-7. I had a lot of fight or flight. Um, matter of fact, I pretty much lived in the state of fight or flight for a long time, um, wondering when the next shoe was going to drop. I see that a lot in my Facebook group as well as when I talk with my clients that um, it's if trying to feel secure after someone has betrayed you like this is difficult because if they do it, if they can do it once, they're going to do it again. Or, um, you know, how can I be sure that I'm going to put this work and effort into um, healing our marriage and he's just not going to run off and do this again? I feel like I'm going to waste my time. I hear that quite a bit and I understand it. I had that same feeling and I even went through that same back and forth. Should I even put effort into this? Should I not? So as you're struggling through the same set of um, questions, concerns, if you will. Here's some things to consider. Um, first, you don't know if he will or will not cheat again. Um, I wish I had a better answer for that. I really do. I wish I could tell you that there are guarantees in life, but there are not. Um, Unfortunately, we are taking a very big risk by staying. And that is just the truth of the matter. We are taking a risk. We um, are stepping into the unknown when we agree to work on this marriage. Um, similarly, if we were to choose to divorce, we need to understand that too is a whole other set of risk and a whole other set of unknowns, right? So risk is risk, unknown is unknown. We cannot predict the future. And when you're dealing with any other human being on the planet, there are never guarantees because you cannot control that other person. I believe it's important that we embrace what I just shared. We have got to come to a place where we acknowledge fully and we come to acceptance that we cannot control them. I know it's scary. I know that's a concept that none of us really want to hear or process, but we cannot control another human. We just can't. It's just not part of the way the world works. What we can control is ourselves. So if you're wondering right now, um, am I wasting my time? I'm so scared. Um, maybe he's doing all the right things right now. Uh, but I'm still scared to death. If he did it once, he's going to do it again. Or maybe you're, you're hearing from the world, you know, once a cheater, always a cheater and all that garbage out there and, and all this. And you start going, oh my gosh, you know, what if I'm wasting the best years of my life? I mean, what if 10 years down the road, they do this again and I could have been free and married to me? There's a whole lot of what a shoulda, coulda. There's a whole lot of things. When we choose to stay, we need to make this decision because this is what we, we want. For me, ask yourself the why. Why, why am I staying? What is it? Here, here, here's, my, here's my why. Um, first of all, I believe wholeheartedly in the covenant of marriage. I pledged a covenant, even though my husband broke his side of it, I believed in mine. And I loved my husband. And... Um, I 
as hurt as I was, I felt like that love I had for him and the love I knew he had for me, because I knew he loved me, and I saw he was going through a deep limerence. I saw it. I was watching it. It was like a bad horror movie. And I kept screaming, get out of there, get out of there. But he, you know, he was in it. He was deep into it. Um, I wanted to be able to one day look in the mirror, even if my marriage dissolved 10 years down the road. And I wanted to be able to say to myself, I did absolutely everything I, within my, my power. I, I did everything I could. And I did not want to walk away until I knew I had done everything I could. That was my why. I didn't stay for the kids. I didn't stay for financial reasons. I stayed because I loved my husband and I wanted to do everything I could, everything that was in, within my power to try to heal what was broken. Now, that was just my end of it. I had no control over what my husband did or did not do or how he stepped into it. All I could do was what I could do. So what is your why? Well, why are you there? And if you're there for a reason that you feel good about, then understand that you're there for a reason that you believe is important. You're there for the right reasons. And you're willing to take a risk for those reasons. You're, the risk is worth it. The risk is worth the potential outcome. That's how we take risks in life. We know there's a chance it'll fail. We know there's a chance things won't work out. But we take a risk anyway because we understand that if the risk produces what we would love for it to produce, it'll be worth every second of it. And if it doesn't produce it well, then we will have no regrets because we tried for the thing we wanted. Now, I'm not trying to oversimplify this, and I know you're probably thinking to yourself, uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, I'm scared to death. I've put in a lot of energy and effort into this. What if it doesn't work out? Um, if it doesn't work out, you know you need to redirect your energy into that. You need to redirect your energy on another path. And... I highly encourage you to not live life with regret. If you have done everything you could possibly do, if you have leaned in and given your all and it doesn't work out, you're not a failure. You have succeeded. You have succeeded in giving it all. You have succeeded in trying your best. That's what's within our power. Whether they cheat again or not is, is up to them. What we do is up to us. So that's what I, I, I recommend you try to do. Look in the mirror and say, have I, have I given it my all? Do I want to give it my all? Why am I doing this? Is this what I want? Listen, I, I might be the wives who stay coach. I'm actually coaching a couple of women who are in the midst of divorce and I took them knowing they were heading toward divorce because there are some marriages that really don't need to stay together. Um, there's toxicity in some marriages. There's abusive behaviors. And in my particular, in my clients' cases, um, I believe they're, they're making the right choice for them. Um, they can't control their husband and they're moving down a path of independence and being single. And I am all for that. And I'm all for helping them get there and be the strong independent woman I know they can be because that's what's best for them in their situations. What is your why? What is your why? And are you willing to step into the risk to lean into that and do the absolute best you can? That's all you can do. Okay, we need to give ourselves grace. We need to give our relationship grace and understand that's all we can put into it is what we have. So will he cheat again? You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, we can't control it. And it is a risk, but it's worth the risk if you're doing it for your why and you're giving it your all. If you're looking for someone to walk that journey with you as risky as it can be, uh, feel free to schedule a free session with me. The link is below and there's some freebies as well as join my Facebook group. And you know, guys, all I can say is lean in. Whichever choice you make, whether to stay or to go, 
lean in and just do your best. Just do your best. That's really all we can do, my friends. Give yourself grace and, and just focus on what you can do, okay? Can't control them. What can you do? What can you put into it and give it your all?